Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and take a minute and go through some of the definitions of our descriptive statistics. Uh, some of these you probably already know, so it'll be review, and some of these definitions are going to be kind of brand new and something that uh, we can take a minute and talk about. Okay, so I'm just going to label this as basic statistics. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're base, we're going to start from like the, some of the simplest things, and we're going to progress into some more and more uh, complicated descriptive statistics that, that we can actually get to. Okay, so the most basic things are the minimum and the maximum. Okay, so you if you put all of your values on a number line, and you make the minimum one is the smallest. And the biggest one is your maximum. So those are useful because we're going to need them to be able to calculate some of our other values. But that is like our most basic stuff. Uh, from there, let's start talking about some measures of center. OK, so let me put up measures of center. And we've got quite a few. You know a lot of them, and I'm going to toss one extra one up there uh, that may or may not kind of be oh, well known. But let's start off with our mean. OK, so our mean, a lot of times we call this an average. The tricky thing about the word average is it can really mean almost any of the, of the various measures of center. Uh, so we are going to try really hard to make sure that when we are wanting the mean that we say the word mean and not average. I definitely slip up. And I mean, in Excel, the to program in the mean, you literally type the word average. So one of these days, maybe it, it'll change in the lexicon. Um, but for actually doing the mean, remember, we add up all of our measurements that we have. And we divide by the total number of measurements that we have. And there's some mathematical notation that we can do. Uh, we can use this symbol, it means to sum. And we are going to go from our first measurement, or i equals 1. And we're going to sum all the way to our total measurement, or for all of our measurements that we have, which sum up to the number n. Uh, that's just how many measurements we had. OK, so then we're going to sum all of those individual measurements. So xi would, if we had it 1, that would be our first measurement. x sub 2, that's our second measurement, all the way up until all of the measurements that we have. And we are going to divide by the total number of measurements that we have. So just that's kind of how we write it out in our mathematical terminology. Now, this is for specifically the population mean. Uh, if, we want, if we want a sample mean, uh, the capital N's just become little n's. I'm just going to leave it like this because we really aren't going to be calculating these things by hand. We're going to have um, our software package do that for us. Okay, so there's a mean. The next one down that we have is the median. And it simply is the middle number or middle value. Or you can talk about it's the point where 50% of the data is less than it, and 50% of the data uh, was more than it, or it's a middle value. Now, there's some, so that's like the easy answer, uh, is that it's just the middle value. And so if we took all of our numbers, we put them in a number line, and we found where the middle was, if there's an, act, an actual number, like if we had an odd set of numbers, so like 3 is easy, you have, uh, if you go 1, 2, 3, 2 would be our median uh, because we have one number below, we have one number above, and it's the median. Um, if you have like four numbers, if we had 1, 2, 3, and 4, it would be the average of 2 and 3 uh, to get the middle number. But that's like the simplistic answer. Um, some of the software packages that we have do a lot more complicated. Sometimes it weights it if there's a whole bunch of numbers, if it's a specific value. And so the median, is the easy way to kind of remember this is it's just where we cut the data 50% above, 50% below. And once again, we're just going to let the software package do the calculation because um, it does some more complex uh, mathematics in order to get our median. OK, next one down that we have is our mode. 
And the mode is simply uh, the most common value that occurs in our measurement. So we'll just put that up as most common. Okay, and if you notice, all of those are for numerical data. I'm going to propose that we have another measure of center uh, where we're trying to figure out kind of like where people are feeling. And I'm going to put in proportion as well. And our proportion, if we did a whole bunch of like categorical data, it would be the number with trait divided by the total number that, that we have. Now, once again, this is if we had a population with a capital N, um, that would be if we measured everybody in our population. Most of the time we have a sample, and so that capital N becomes a little n when we're talking about samples. Once again, software can handle that for us. Okay, so we have basic measurements, and we've got measures of center. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to talk about like the parts of the whole. We have a couple of different ways that we can talk about parts of the, um, of the entire. So give me a second and I will walk through this guy. So we'll call this parts of whole. Okay, so some of these, once I get into them, you will have heard them before. I'm going to start off with what's called a quartile. Okay, so quartiles are handy. Um, they're easy to remember because you can just think of the word quarter. Or we're going to break our entire data into 25% chunks. This is how a box plot is built. Uh, we put them into kind of these 25% chunks. Um, here, so we'll let's see, break data. into 25% chunks. So if I had, if I have my four quartiles uh, and I have my first quartile, that value would let me know where 25% of the data is going to be between the minimum and the first quartile. And then if I go to my second quartile, I would know that 25% of my responses came between my first quartile and my second quartile, and it goes all the way through. Let me do just a little explanation up here. Uh, let's just do a simple number line. So this would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, and we'll do 7 and 8. All right, so if we broke this into quartiles, we would want the divisions where we've got it broken into 25% chunks. And if you notice, I did this so that I can break it into four chunks, just like that. OK, and then I could find out, OK, where is my median? That would give me a value of 4.5. I could find my Q1, which is right here between these two, which is going to give me 2.5 between these guys. 6.5, and then I have my maximum out here as 8, and my minimum as 1. So this would be like a five number summary. And this guy would be Q1, or the first quartile. This would be the second one, Q2, Q3, and Q4. OK, so this lets me know 25% of my data is between these two numbers, 25 between these two, 25 between these two, and 25 between these two. Once again, we're not going to be calculating this by hand, um, but the concept is that we break our data into these 25% chunks. And that's when we talk about a quartile. All right, the next parts of a whole that we can talk about is called a percentile. OK, and with a percentile, we're just we're breaking it into 1% chunks. So sometimes when you take like a big standardized test, you hear that, hey, I'm in the 95th percentile. That means that 95% of people did worse than my score and 5% did better than my score. But what the percentile is, is it's breaking our data into these 1% chunks. And then so when we look at the 99th, 99% are below and 5% you know, are above from where you are. 
All right, so we've got quartiles, we've got percentiles, and then the most flexible one that we have are we have quantiles. And uh, quantiles can be like any subdivision. So sometimes maybe I want to be, I want to know what this value is in the 75th point two four one percent quantile. Uh, it's just a finer division. Notice quartile is pretty rough. It just breaks it into four pieces. Percentile, a little bit finer. But, and then quantiles lets us do any division uh, that, that we want. So anyways, that's kind of how we talk about our parts of, of the whole. Uh, and we will talk a lot about this later on in class. It's really useful and really important. Um, and when we get to our graphs, we will start using the quartiles in order that we can produce a five number summary and a box plot. Okay, so we've got our basics, we've got a measure of centers, and we've got our parts of the whole. We're going to do one more kind of summary statistic that we've got, and this one is going to be uh, what we call our measures of spread. All right, so here we go. We got spread. And there's a whole bunch of measures of spread that we can, in fact, cover. Uh, the easiest one is just the range, and the range is pretty easy. It's just equal to the maximum minus the minimum. So that's why we need that basic guy. It gives us our range of our max and our minimum. Uh, the next one that we want to talk about is what's called the IQR. And by definition, it's range of middle 50%. Okay, so what we are going to use is we're going to use our quartiles to figure out what the IQR actually is. So we take Q3 minus Q1, and it gives us our inner quartile range. So let me put that in parentheses, inner quartile range. And it is equal to Q3 minus Q1. Okay, so those are just kind of some simple measurements of spread. It lets us kind of know how, like the name says, how spread out our data is. If we have a range that's really small and an IQR that's really small, we know that all of our measurements are really close together. If they're further apart, then we are seeing that our data has kind of this more, just more spread into it. Uh, and then we're going to end with uh, just two more measurements. Uh, one is the variance, and it's a little bit more complicated measurement. I'm going to show you the equation. Once again, our software will, will calculate this out for us. So the variance has this equation. So what it is, it's the average distance from the mean squared. Let me show you what that looks like. So we are taking all of our measurements. Notice I'm using a capital N, that's for the population. If we do a sample, we have to do some little adjustments to this equation. I'm not going to go into that. Once again, the software will do it for us. All right, so we've got the summation. And what we're going to do is we go, we look at the individual measurement, and we compare it to the mean. Notice how this is the population mean. If we are doing a sample variance, this would be x bar, which would be the sample estimate of the mean. But we're going to look at it, once again, from the um, from the population standpoint. And then we square it, and we divide by the total number of observations in our population. So that's how we take care of the variance. Last one that we have is called the standard deviation. Let's get that one up, standard deviation. And this one is nice and easy. Uh, all you have to do in order to figure out what the standard deviation is, is take the square root of the variance. So I'm just going to write that. And whether we're talking about the population or the sample standard deviation, um, how we get it is the same. We just we take the square root of the variance. OK, so there we go. 
these are some of the basic statistics that, that we're going to need, and you will see a lot of these show up on our various different summaries that are produced by our software. So you'll be able to see the mins, you'll be able to see like mean, median, uh, if we track it down we can have it produce the mode and the proportions. Uh, for parts of the whole, sometimes we're looking at quartiles, the percentiles, sometimes the quantiles. Uh, remember quartiles, we break it into four pieces or 25% chunks. Percentiles, we break it into 1% chunks. And quantiles, it can be any subdivision that, that we want. So this one is really flexible. And then for the, sp for the spread, we have a couple different measurements. We have range, which is just the max minus the minimum. We have the IQR, which is just Q3 minus Q1. And then the last two variants tells us, like, on average, what's the diff distance from the mean squared? That's our variance. And then we also have the standard deviation, which is just simply, you know, let me write this out just a little bit better. We'll have that be our square root. And we'll put an equal sign out here. The standard deviation is just the square root of our variance. And there we go. Good luck, you guys.